Here we are, everybody. It's great to be in Ipswich. I'll tell you a story. When I was a little kid, my aunt and uncle owned a cottage on Little Neck. Our first step, then, in visiting Ipswich's distilleries, breweries, and wineries is the 1634 Meadery. Today, the morning radio crew from Boston's WROR, Lauren and Wally, is stopping by. The Meadery is owned and run by Deb and Dan Clapp. How you doing? Good. Good. It's a camera. Hi. Hey, how how are you? Hi. I'm Lauren. This is LB. Hi. Nice to meet nice you. I've nice seen you all over yeah. the web. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Wow. So, we've been getting the, so you're uh, here. You guys. Yes. So, okay. Yep. Good. 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 Very good. Oh, no. I don't know if all our viewers are familiar with WROR's morning show, but Lauren and Wally are perhaps the best guys on Boston Morning Radio. They are particularly well known for their Men from Maine skits. It's beautiful around. Oh, it's so very nice. We were just talking about how you know, a lot of people are the Cape, but you're Maine too. Yeah, you Everything is here. We've got the ocean, and we've got the, you know, the is it, pastures. Is it Crane of State here? Crane of State is here. Yeah. So I, I came so twice. I went for a wedding. Yeah. Oh, so, yes. Oh, so that's a nice place. Yes. 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 Uh, my, my aunt was paying for the gene, a genealogy. I went over to the gym and I brought back some mead as a uh, souvenir. Yeah. And I knew I knew about mead. I was a home brewer for years. Okay. And finally, um, it actually brought back my wife from so Vietnam. So we sat in the living room for a couple years and she didn't like to read it. So we finally brought it out and, and they had a gathering. Whatever. We took it out and took a sip of it and said, "This stuff is really good." Uh, it was like you know, it's a traditional European thing. Yeah. And uh, and then I, being an engineer and a home brewer. I wanted to try and make some of this yeah. stuff, so I got started making it and I started filling up my basement with carboys and buckets and, and whatnot, and it kept growing and growing and growing. And then I started playing with the idea, well, why don't I open a, a business up? Because I'd seen some national recognition yeah. Yeah. picking up, and it seemed like good timing. And uh, right. so we uh, went through all the licensing, which took about uh, nine months. Uh, I was going to say, that's probably a long process. Uh, local, nine. state, federal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Building and perm permits, electrical permits, all that kind of so stuff. They have so they have to come out, you have inspectors, and they inspect everything. Yep. And all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to have formula approval by the yeah. federal and license or label approval and all that stuff. So and it's been a learning experience. Alcohol, a lot of content, and yep. all that yep. nine yards. And, and with mead, there's some really weird things like you can't, I can't actually put mead on the label unless it's, if it's over 14%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a gentleman from Ipswich who does a show called Let's. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Good, good, good. Here we are, everybody. It's great to be in Ipswich. I'll tell you a story. When I was a little kid, my aunt and uncle owned a cottage on Little Neck. Oh, okay. So I spent four weeks every summer at the beach at Little Neck. So I'm a big fan of Ipswich. Well, welcome. Thank you. It's great hey. to be at the 1634 Meadery. Come on in, everybody. And when do we start drinking? Right now. Yes, we're going to taste some meat. Oh, yes, right. 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 Excellent. Belly up to the bar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I resemble that. <laughs> I want to put my belly right up on the bar? <laughs> oh, this is a sweet room. Isn't this awesome? Yes, indeed. This is fantastic. Okay, where do we start? Well, I'm going to give you a list here. Let me go in this order. This is Menus. The, I started with uh, five meads that um, I thought people would like. Out of, uh, I don't want many, to block the view here. Many recipes <laughs> I've made. And uh, we're serving some sweeter stuff because a lot of people start sweet. Yes, I like, like sweet. They, they seem to like That's sweet. That's why I like her so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more into sour. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll take you to the drier stuff as we move down. Okay. Because mead does not have to be sweet. It's just it's how you want to make it. <laughs> what is the definition of mead? So mead is uh, a fermented honey and water, so that's, that's, uh, that's mead. 
And uh, you can add different things to mead, make fruit meads, which are called a mellow mel, or you can add spices, called a methylaglin. So uh, mead's very versatile. And there is a test later. Okay. Test, so uh -huh. so after I'm done with, with, the, with the tasting, we'll ask you some questions and uh, mm -hmm. see if you can answer. Okay. So I'm going to start you off with a traditional mead. This is called orange elation. It's made with fermented honey and water only, and it's uh, made with orange blossom honey. Okay. So now, who would, in history, who would have been drinking this? Um, well, obviously, this wouldn't have been a European thing because there's not too many orange trees in Europe. So this really probably would have come later in uh, later in the evolution of mead. Oh, okay. But where did mead start? What what area of the world did they start making? This? So um, records as early as um, 8000 BC exist in uh, in China. Uh, ah. The ones. They made uh, ah. some clay pots that have been found that uh, indicated that they drank mead. No, no, that's right. Right. <laughs> oh, this is number 1634. That's yeah. like it. <laughs> that's delicious. You like it. Yeah, well, you know me. Yeah. One of my favorite drinks, the next one. Yeah. 1634, 1635, whatever yeah. it is. No substitute. Now, when we get to the 1634 drinks, that yeah. yeah. exactly. yeah. very good. What's the alcohol content one of these? So this one is about 13 and a half, so it's about the same as uh, a red wine. So oh, all, okay. all the stuff is between 13 and a half and 14 and a half, the stuff I make. Okay. You can make it lighter or dark, uh, heavier, depending on your preference. So you can add more of honey and make it uh, sweeter and more alcoholic, or you can um, uh, thin it out and make it less alcoholic. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's very good. It's very good. Is this something that people would tend to drink <laughs> like as a dessert wine type thing, or would this be just have a drink, you have yes. it? So I think, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, I think it, you'll see on the styles that uh, the first one you had was a sweeter one, which might tend to be better for an after dinner drink, or uh, we like to think of it sitting on the, on the, uh, on the deck in the sun, hot sun, maybe having it with an ice cube in it, mm -hmm. oh, this okay. one you just had, but, uh, so, uh, but you'll see as we go through it, there's a wide variety of meat tastes, and uh, they're all meat, but they're all good. <laughs> hey, dogs count too, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Hey Shelly, can you do some more cups? cups <laughs> <in there? laughs> this mead makes me break into song. So it sounded like a Gregorian chant. Yeah, I know, really. Okay, now what's uh, what's next? On? So the next on the list is a uh, strawberry field. So this would remind, oh, the probably going to remind you of summer a bit. So this was made with local honey and uh, local fruits, and as a mellow mel, meaning that it's mead with like fruit. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be. A little stronger flavor than the last one? Uh, it's going to be different flavor. So this one actually has some spice in it. So this has some cinnamon in it. Oh, cinnamon. Okay. Did you like... Did you invent these flavors yourself, or did you find these? Uh, yes, I've evolved my my Make own recipe. Nice <laughs> I've evolved my own recipe over time, so I've made this several times for neighbors and friends, and got better at it as I went along until I was uh, uh, hopefully ready to sell it. So hopefully, you guys will like it. <laughs> Hi, this is uh, Lauren Wally, LB, Hank, and we're all up the 1634 metery in beautiful Ipswich. And uh, Dan is the meter meister. The and, meter meister! And uh, oh, he's, like uh, he's making meat for us and telling us all about it. And well, first of all, you're right in the heart of Ipswich. It's a beautiful, beautiful location. Uh, number three, Short Street, if I'm correct. That's correct. And uh, you make your own mead, uh, which is a, what, 8,000 year old beverage? Uh, at least, yes. At wow. least, yeah. okay. And it's made with honey and water and then whatever else you'd like to have to flavor it. Am I correct there? That's correct. You, t you add uh, honey and water together and then toss in some yeast to ferment it into alcohol. And uh, you can add fruit to it or, uh, and also spices go very good with meat. So depending on what you're uh, shooting for in your, in your recipe or uh, as, a, as a meat maker or mazer, uh, I can do all sorts of things with meat. So very versatile drink. I it's, think that we can all uh, testify that it's Yeah, it's really very, delicious. But very good. We should go to an expert and ask them what they think. Lauren Beckham Falcone, <laughs> how do you like this mead? Uh, I love it. You do? I do, and I was skeptical because I don't really love sweet, but I love it. In fact, I'm going to buy some. 
But I want to know, where can you buy it if you're not in Ipswich? So right now, because of our production levels, uh, initial production levels, you only can buy it here and one store in Boston, oh. on Newbury Street, uh, Bower Wine and Spirits. Okay. Uh, they came in uh, our grand opening and uh, had a taste in, and he said, I'm ready when you are. And I said, well, if you're going to buy some, go ahead. And so he uh, he took some cases of mead down to uh, his, his shop down in, uh, on Newbury Street. Yes. So go ahead. So um, so as I get uh, ramped up in production, I will start expanding and carrying it in, uh, in shops all over North Shore. Well, what's great is that you can come here to Ipswich, which is so beautiful, and then you can come to a bar, which is my favorite thing, <laughs> and then you can have a tasting and decide which one you like. So it's worth it to take the drive and uh, do some uh, shots of mead. <laughs> well, one of the one of the reasons I had a tasting room is so I could educate people. Like like yourself who have never had mead and educate you on how mead's made and, and how, how uh, what different things you can do with it. The alcohol content is comparable to what? Uh, it's right in the, my, my mead, uh, it's my choice really, I can do it other ways, but this stuff is all between 13 and a half and 14 and a half percent, which is comparable to red wine. It's the 1634 meadery, meadery in the heart of Ipswich. Come on up, ask for Dan. Yeah. Enjoy some mead. And I just want to say to Dan, it's nice to meet you. <laughs>